prove that if a is not squared, then either the row vectors of a or the column vectors of a are linearly dependent. So let us begin. Suppose a is not square. Well, if a is m by n matrix, where the number of columns is more than the number of rows, you're just right here, everybody. Then what's the meaning of that? It means that the set of n column vectors are vectors in the m space, rm. And they must be linearly dependent. Why is that? Because when n is more than m, you have more than m vectors. Only m vectors span the space. So if you have more than m of them, they are definitely linearly dependent. The same argument. If the number of rows is more than the number of columns, then the set of m row vectors are vectors in the n space, r to the n. What's the meaning of that? It means that you have n linearly independent vectors that span rn. But as long as m is more than n, it means that you have more than n vectors in that set. So it means that they have no other choice but being linearly dependent. The next question, give an example showing that the rank of the product of two matrices can be less than the rank of either matrix. The very first matrix can be 1, 0, 0, 0, with rank 1. Why the rank is 1? Because you only have one non-zero row. The second matrix, 0, 0, 0, 1. The rank of this matrix is also 1. Why? Because you only have one non-zero row. If you multiply them together, you get zero matrix with rank 0. So the rank of zero matrix is 0 because it has no non-zero row. So you just showed that you can find two matrices that the rank of each one is more than the rank of the product. So it is possible. On the exam, if I ask you to give me a proof or counterexample for the proof you need to use general definition, everyone. This is not a proof. This is count as a counterexample. Counterexample. Not a proof. This is not acceptable as a proof. For proof, you need to use definition. If I ask you to disprove something or show that something false, well, you're allowed to use a counterexample, not other ones. In this question, I ask you to give examples of matrices like A and B of the same size, such that the rank of A plus B is less than the rank of A, and rank of A plus B is the less than the rank of the second matrix. Well, we have infinitely many answers here. Suppose the first matrix is identity matrix, and the second matrix is switching the rows of identity matrix. If I add these together, we get a matrix with all entries equal to each other. Applying elementary row operations, you can multiply the first row by negative one and add it to the second row, and the second row disappears. So the rank of the first matrix is two, the rank of the second matrix is two, the rank of the summation is equal to one. So you cannot say that the rank of A plus rank of B is equal to rank of A plus rank of B. This is a counterexample for you. So the rank of A is equal rank of B, which is 2, which is not the same as rank of A plus B. They are not equal to each other. Let A be an M by N matrix, and M is less than N. The rank of this matrix 
what is the largest value of R? Well, what was the definition of R? R or the rank of the matrix is the number of non-zero rows after we apply elementary row operations. Since the row or column space has dimension that is not larger than smaller of M and N, so R must be less than or equals to M. We know that M is less than N, everybody. And when you apply elementary row operations, this rank R must be less than or equals to M. So the maximum value it can take is the number of rows. Next, how many vectors are in a basis for the row space of matrix A? Well, you can find R vectors in a basis for the row space of matrix A. Let A be an M by N matrix. Prove that the null space of A is the subspace of the null space of the transpose of A times A. Okay, let's see, what do we have here? We need to take an element in this smaller set and show that that element lands in the larger set. That's how you prove a set is a subset of a larger set. So if you have two sets like X and Y to show that X is included in Y or X is a subset of Y, you need to take a random element in X and show that that random element actually lands in the larger set. So we're taking a random element like X in this smaller set. Our goal is to show that this X lands in the larger set. So how do we do that? Since X belongs to null space of A, by definition, AX is equal to zero. There is no doubt there. This is the definition of null space of A. It is the set of all X values, X vectors, such that AX is equal to zero vector. So since X is in this set, it satisfies the property. The property is AX equal to zero. So what's the meaning of that? If I take the transpose of the matrix and multiply both sides by the transpose, transpose of A times A times X becomes zero times the transpose of A, which is just zero. What's the meaning of that? It means that, hey, this X is a solution for A transpose times A times X equal to zero. So what's the meaning of that? It means that X belongs to the null space of the transpose of A times A. And you're done. You just showed that if I take a random element here, which is X, that random element satisfies the condition for the null space of the transpose of A times A. Nice and easy.